Hobart School of Welding Technology presents Training in Oxyacetylene Welding, Cutting, and Brazing. Topic number 14, Lecture Discussion. Introduction to Flame Cutting, Manual and Machine. The objective of this topic is to be able to identify the principles of flame cutting steel. Flame cutting is an important metal working process. It is used in almost every metal working industry because it is one of the fastest methods to cut metals in all thicknesses. When a saw cuts metal, it does so by removing chips of the metal. The slot where the saw removed the metal is called a kerf. Flame cutting also produces a kerf. The flame does not actually cut the metal in the manner that the saw does. It burns it out. It is hard to imagine burning steel, but if the temperature is great enough, burning will take place. If metal is heated to its ignition or kindling temperature, and then a jet of pure oxygen is directed at the hot metal, a chemical reaction called oxidation takes place. When oxidation occurs rapidly, it is called combustion or burning. When it occurs slowly, it is called rusting. It takes three elements to cause this burning. Fuel, which can be almost anything that will combine with oxygen. Oxygen, in high enough purity to combine with the fuel. And kindling temperature the temperature at which burning will start. These three elements are known as the combustion triangle. All three must be present to have a fire. If one is eliminated, the fire will go out. Paper has a low kindling temperature. It catches fire quickly and continues to burn because it generates enough heat to maintain its kindling temperature. A flame raises the paper fuel to its kindling temperature and there is enough oxygen in the air to support combustion. Steel will also burn, but it has a higher kindling temperature, about 1500 degrees Fahrenheit, and requires a higher purity of oxygen, about 87%. For example, if we heat a piece of steel wool red hot and then expose it to oxygen, it will burn and go out when the oxygen purity drops below 87%. The remains are iron oxide, the same as rust on exposed steel. Therefore, flame cutting can be considered a rapid rusting process, and when controlled, it can sever steels in any thickness. In flame cutting, a torch provides the heat to reach kindling temperature and a supply of oxygen to maintain combustion. By controlling the preheat, oxygen supply, and rate of travel, a precise kerf can be produced to cut and shape metal as desired. The equipment for manual cutting is the same as for welding, except for the torch. There are two basic types. The standard one-piece torch designed for cutting applications only, and the combination torch, which can be modified for cutting, welding, and heating applications. The principles of both are the same. Both have throttle valves, like the welding torch, to control working pressure, plus a lever valve assembly on the handle to start the supply of pure cutting oxygen. The type of cutting tip varies, depending on the thickness of the metal and the type of fuel gas being used. Cutting tips are made of copper or tellurium copper alloy. Some are a one-piece assembly and others are two pieces. Two-piece assemblies are designed with a star-like insert with the large hole in the center. This kind is commonly used in production. For either type, the large hole is referred to as the oxygen orifice, and the smaller holes are the preheat orifices. Different tips are used with different fuel gases. The acetylene tip on the left 
has fewer preheat orifices due to the higher temperatures that acetylene produces over other kinds of gas. The other tip would be used with gases that produce a lower temperature, such as metal acetylene propadine, propane, and natural gas. Scarfing or gouging tips are similar to cutting tips, but are angled to provide access to defective welds. Heating tips are generally much longer and have a larger tip end with larger orifices. Each manufacturer produces its own type and style of tip and uses its own stock numbering system. For this reason, most welders refer to the manufacturer's specifications to determine the proper tip for their application. Oxy-fuel flame cutting is commonly used manually with handheld torches, but with specialized equipment and attachments, the process can be mechanized to cut precise shapes and straight lines. For example, the straight line tracker machine is designed to ride on a track and can cut a line for as long as there is track to ride on. The operator simply sets the torch angle and gas pressures in a similar manner to manual cutting. The tracker itself provides the travel speed and guidance along the cut, but the operator must set the track in line with the cut, or vice versa, and set the travel speed on the tracker mechanism. Once all settings are made, the torch is lit and the start of the cut is preheated. Then the cutting oxygen is applied and the tracker is started in the desired direction. The operator observes the cutting and makes fine adjustments to the travel speed if necessary as the cut proceeds. A process known as powder cutting can be used to cut materials which do not oxidize readily by directing iron powder close to the preheat flames which permits the cutting oxygen to sever through the material. Higher production rates can be achieved by ganging a number of torches so that a single guidance system can produce a number of identical cuts at the same time. A quality cut will have a smooth appearance, sharp edges, and have no attached slag. Improper adjustment and technique can produce poor results. For example, an insufficient preheat produces a cut with the bottom half uneven and wavy with slag along the bottom edge. Too much preheating will cause the top half to be badly melted, the middle section fairly smooth, and quite a bit of slag along the bottom edge. Too low an oxygen pressure will cause the top edge and cut lines to be uneven. Too high an oxygen pressure causes the oxygen stream to wander, resulting in deep gouges into the sides of the cut. Too slow a travel speed results in melting of the top half with uneven, coarse cut lines. Too rapid a travel speed will cause the cut lines to curve in the opposite direction of travel and make the cut uneven and irregular. Erratic travel speed results in partly smooth and partly uneven gouged cuts. And a combination of several improper techniques may result in a lost cut.